Hey, mi gente. All right, Ish here. And I'm talking to someone who's managed to get me excited again about comic books, which is not an easy task. But I'm here with creator Caden Phoenix. Now, she is the creator of, and she's holding it in her hand right now, A La Brava. It's a graphic novel with the first all Latina superhero group. Is that, that is accurate to say, correct? Absolutely accurate, yes. The first in comic book history. Wow, look at us here making history in New York Comic Con. Why the hell not, right? Yeah. So how did this idea start up? I mean, I know you've got your other books as well, which you write, uh, you know, Bandita, Santa, Loquita, who I'm a little partial to just because she's from the Caribbean, like your boy. Um, you know, also, I'm also a little crazy. Um, so there's that. But where did this all stem from? You know, how did, how did the germ of the, the solo books and then lead to this? So I wanted to create to see a Latino superhero on the big screen, right? Because I am an independent screenwriter. So I wrote out a feature-length screenplay. I shot a sizzle, like a short film, to show it off, and everybody asked me for the comic book. And so that's literally the reason why I started. I pivoted. I started doing comics, graphic novels, really, and that's just started it all. So that was my origin, origin, origin. And then like, if you have five superheroes, you might as well put them as a team. That's just my thought process. And so that's what happened. I just threw them all together as a team, and then it just happened to become the first team. That's funny to me that they were like, love this idea. It's an original idea. Can you retro create it? Right? Like, can you, can you, can you retrofit it? Like, turn it into a comic book and then come back to us. That's insane to me. It works. It's the weirdest thing. It actually works. Like, Jalisco was the first one that came out. And, like, it, so LA Comic Con, and I premiered it in 2019. And then Netflix brought me in. Uh, w Wag, so WBTV brought me in. And Disney brought me in. Like, literally just from that one book. Wow. Yes. So just one book and all of a sudden they're like, IP, we need it, we need it, and she's got something. So your first book was Jalisco. It was. Um, and if I remember correctly, you, you kind of based it on, on the women in your family. You are a, yeah. you're from um, California, mm -hmm. Chicana, right? Yes. So how did, that, how did that inspiration come out in Jalisco? So Jalisco is a mixture of all my family, like you said. So my mom does look horrible, my whole childhood, so that's... Very roughly loose on my mom. It's not, but the base is, is my mom because she was my superhero. So I made another. Don't lie, your mother's a superhero. She it's is. okay. She has a secret identity. Nobody will know. <laughs> she is. Don't tell anybody on TV here. Um, but yeah, so that, and then my grandma's the Jalisco. So that's why I named her Jalisco. My other grandma is the Chihuahua. So that's the Mujeres de Juarez, that, which is the, you know, the social injustice that they go and fight for or to protect the girls. And then every single member in the whole book is a family member of mine, uh, you know, within. The names, of course, it's not actually the people, but the names themselves. So it's an extra little nice, you know, Easter egg for myself. <laughs> you heard it here, guys. Caden Phoenix's entire family is made up of superheroes. <laughs> that is, she's saying it's not, but we know she's lying. Uh, <laughs> but, so, you know, tell us a little bit about A La Brava. So obviously you've got the solo titles and now they've all just decided to band together. Like, yes. what is what is the type of threat that only five Latinas can take care of? So female politicians are getting killed off one by one by one and it's going up the ranks slowly and oh. we don't know why so that is the reason they get banded together by a grassroots uh, organization leader brings them all together against their will uh, you know and she just sells she pretty much pitches it to them and then for the greater good they do actually end up working together and find out who the killer is all right and honestly there's nothing a latina can't do <laughs> I mean, if, if you want a job done right, just go get just go get a bunch of Latinas. They will not only will they do it right, they'll tell you why you were doing it wrong. Absolutely. Because that's the way that it works, and they should. Damn it. So sure. what's next? Next are my princesses. So I have native and Latina princesses. So this is more of an all age. These are social injustices, so they're a little bit darker in regards to the themes. This one is literally Disney because I I did grow up as a Disney kid, and so but. Latin princesses and Native American as well. Um, they don't get saved by a prince. They have nothing to do with boys saving them or the vice versa. They go on adventures because, like, what else would a princess do? In my mind, like, that's what I would do. Well, because it's what you do if you're a princess. You got all this free time. You go on an adventure. Why are you going to wait around? Right. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. So. One thing I wanted to touch on is, you know, obviously you're doing a phenomenal job in terms of representation with, with your books and your content. How do you feel that representation specifically of Latino culture has changed in this, the comic book industry, the entertainment industry, maybe in the last five years? Because something I always found interesting growing up as a comic book nerd was most, if not all, of my favorite comic book artists were Latino. Really? You know, your George Perez is, your Phil Jimenez, Humberto Ramos. And yet, I never saw that reflected in the characters, right? And I feel like that's that's changing a little bit. But I guess as, as someone who's creating, you know, what do you, how do you feel that that's happening, or is it happening? It's absolutely happening, very very slowly. But it depends who's um, who 
we're the gatekeepers, right? So I am in charge of everything. So I have all Latina artists, my pencil ink color letter on every single one of my books. And then Latina, so it is inclusive. I do have non-binary and trans people as well on my princesses. And so it's like, I do get to choose, which is great, you know, and they, they will rise up and they're working. They're actually working on lots of other gigs too. And, you know, and they're doing me that favor, which is very nice. So it is changing, but it's just who's, who's you know, who's that the boss? Who's the one leading it? Right. And so it is, we're getting through the pipeline. Well, and we're getting through the pipeline because of people like yourself. So, you know, on behalf of Latinos, you know, representation, thank you. Because the fact that you're just like, you know what? Not only am I going to write one book, I'm going to write another one. Then I'm going to write another one. And then they're going to team up. Yeah. And then now I'm going to create a whole other universe that exists. That to me is so phenomenal. And honestly, as someone who's probably a little older than you, um, something I didn't necessarily grow up with. And I think it's beautiful that you're putting that out there for that next generation. So thank you. Thank you very much. All right. So check it out, guys. A la brava. Can we see the cover again? A la brava. I mean, come on. You know you want to check it out. Look how cute and colorful and fun it is. Yeah. Right? All right. Thank you. Thank you.